Hello, this is Ken Yinxue speaking. In this section, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, stack power density. From previous, we've been mentioned uh, the stack is a, actually is a, a single cell connect in series and become a cell stack. And but why uh, the power density of cell stack is important? The power density of few cell stack will be determine how big the fuel cell might be. And this is very critical for uh, fuel cell for um, mobile application for electric vehicle or bus or for the portable application such as for the notebook power uh, unit, those kind of things. Th those kind of application, the size of the fuel cell uh, is a critical because right now fuel cell is relatively big and it take a lot of space. So the, the higher the power density of the fuel cell will be better because it occupy less space or the weight. Over here, we've been concentrated on the volume of the fuel cell stack. So the power density of the fuel cell stack is based on uh, per, per liter volume and how much the fuel cell stack will, gen, uh, will be uh, generate the power. This one will be determined by the typical uh, current voltage uh, curve, or we call the polarization curve. Over here, uh, the, this is a, sing, a single cell, the voltage of single cell we plot as a function of current density, the how many uh, amp per centimeter square of the active electrical area. So in general, uh, the cell voltage decrease as the current density increase is kind of like this curve. But over here, I draw the three different curves. We, we, we assume the, the internal resistance, if uh, at a point to ohm, it somehow you reduce the internal resistance, then the curve will be changed from the blue to green and to red. And over here, the dashed line is a power density. That means per unit area, how much watt will be generated. Is equivalent to the cell voltage times the current density. That's it. So you can see, as we if we got a lower lower internal resistance for a given cell the voltage, we got a higher current density output. You can see from the higher current density output, if we got the the, the internal resistance reduced, or if we at a fixed current density we might get a higher cell voltage output or the power density output. If we fix the current density, we get higher power density output. So we can see uh, this diagram, how can you use this diagram to evaluate the power density of cell stack? Uh, we assumed the, the fuel cell stack that we're going to design is a uh, uh, output power is one kilowatt and then cell voltage is 48 volt. So from the current the EI curve or the voltage uh, current density curve, uh, we, just, we can pick one uh, operating point. That's mean the, at the one here, at the point one. And the, over here, if we pick this point here, that's mean the internal reasons are 0.15. If uh, this one is uh, the MEA, we uh, we receive, and then this is a polarization curve they had. And in that case, uh, if at a, we operate at a 0.7 volt, then the output uh, current density will be at a 0.5 M per centimeter square. So if we had this piece of information, the single cell voltage 0.7, current density is uh, 0.5 M or 500 mini M per centimeter square. We assume that a single cell, the thickness is 4 millimeter. That means a bipolar play, MEA, and uh, the gasket, all this come into for a single cell, that the thickness of that is a 4 millimeter. Then, based on this information, how we can calculate the, the the volume of the cell stack. In this case, we only calculate the, the active component. We didn't count the, the end play, current director, and other uh, peripheral uh, uh, 
um, materials or components. And over here, based on this information, we can calculate first how long the uh, the cell stack will be. For instance, we want to know the volume of this, the area A1, A2, the the width or the height and the length of the stack. The first we calculate the length of stack. Over here, the, because the, uh, they all connect in series to in order to produce 48 volt output voltage, each single cell is 0.7 volt. So we need actual 69 cells. Or maybe we, for the safety, we may give us 70 cells in that case. Each cell is a 4 millimeter, is 0.4 centimeter. So the total stack long length is 27.6 centimeter. That's the length, but the only active material, not including the end plate or the current collector. Then we're going to determine how big the area we need for the active component or the electro area for a single cell. The first thing we had to calculate the stack output current. The output current equal can be calculated from, by the power density divided by cell voltage, the stack voltage. Then we give the output the current is 21 amp. The current density is at 500 milli amp per centimeter square. So how much the area we may need for the electro is 42 centimeter square. And this one we can de determine is that you might ha have a stack designed by 6 times 7 or 14 times 3 might be at this point they should be the same uh, produce the same out energy output or the power output but in reality uh, they might be the different might be generally different the power out output density so um, in in this calculation all the dimension we calculate is the only for a cell stack only count inside the active component. That's mean the electrode, the MEA, and then the, might be the bipolar plate, the active area, this this area. So in that case, the the power density of the active area region is a, uh, this is the area uh, times this length of the stack and then times the area, this the volume of the stack and the and this is output uh, power. So this per liter watt, uh, this one is a 0.87 kilowatt. This is the power density output uh, for the stack. But this one, uh, we only consider the active area only or active region. If we really count a, a stack, um, this is the active area. That's where the electro will be generated electric current in this area. But uh, there's other peripheral area, there's no electric current generated, but still need the volume as should be counted into the stack volume. And the, over here is a manifold. This manifold will carry the rectans active uh, uh, rect uh, gas uh, from the stack through to the individual single cell and carry out the product and outside the uh, stack. So if I assume, and this one, the, the whole uh, reserve for the screw or the tie rod. So uh, if it, over here, there's a, I assume there's a one centimeter res, re, reserve the space, one centimeter for each side. Then original, the active area is only six times seven, 42 centimeter. Now it's a, end with a eight times nine because uh, six plus two both uh, one centimeter is uh, eight centimeter and a uh, seven plus two is a uh, nine centimeter. You end up with 72 centimeter square. It's almost twice. Only I add uh, one centimeter on each side. In this case, how much the, the real stack power density? In this case, the electro area uh, or the, the total volume, the, the area of the uh, stack inside the 42 centimeter is become 72 centimeter. And then the length of stack, we had counted the both end plate. Over here, I assume the three centimeter 
uh, for each M plate plus the current collector. So the total cell length is a 27.6 plus 6 because you've got a two M plate, one at each end of the stack. So this case you calculate, then the power density is become reduced from 5.8 to 0.4, almost reduced 50%. That's very la large. So you can see over here, this the tiny area increase will be reduce the power density significance. So the manifold the design or the tie rod design to get the, uh, reduce this area is very important. For instance, uh, the other things uh, over here I didn't draw if the uh, cell, cell stake greater than one kilowatt, you had a uh, water cooling manifold to transport the water throughout the uh, stack. That also had a design into this area. So this uh, material flow of uh, mechanical strength, how to apply this, uh, try to reduce the peripheral area is very important. So uh, this is the stack actually we count, uh, that will be including the total air uh, volume of the stack. Now, uh, the point one is the original design point, for instance, the, upper, the future operating point. Right now, in the case, if we can somehow improve the cell internal resistance from 0.15 to 0.1, in that case, even we operate at a 0.7 volt, the, the operating point will be shifted from 0.1 to 0.2, and uh, the, the cur output current density will be increased from 0.5 to 0.7 uh, amp per centimeter square. This one might be can be done if you the internal region decrease by you use uh, replace the existing membrane with a higher conductivity membrane then you can reduce the internal resistance or you can simply make the membrane thinner so the anode castle is getting close then you will reduce the internal resistance. We can now we can see uh, if you you make this slight change in the internal resistance only uh, 0.05 ohm change and the, the shift from here the current density how how this will affect its uh, stack out, uh, power density. In this case, you can see we do the same calculation. The only thing is the current density in some 500 we increase to, to 700. The other thing is that the thickness of single cell might be reduced from 4 to 2 millimeter if we replace the carbon bipolar plate into metallic bipolar plate, the thickness might be reduced. In this case, because the thickness reduced, so the length of the stack will be reduced also. This is calculated. And uh, the power density, the current density increase at this uh, from here. So the area of the electro area required also reduced. So the power density for the active area, this uh, previous version is a 0.86. But with this modification, the power density almost triple. You can see. 2.4. But uh, and again, if the, over here the peripheral, uh, uh, the area, we don't make any improvement. This is the first version, this is the second version over here. In that case, um, the, and the end plate, we don't increase. But in even this way, the stack power density will be increased from 0.4 to 0.9 uh, kilowatt per liter in this way. So, um, so far the, we've been talk about in this unit, uh, we've been talk about the, from the electro catalyst uh, to the MEA, the membrane electro assembly, and then to the single cell, and to the stack, and then the stack power density. The next, uh, we're going to talk about the power system, because the fuel cell is different from the, the diff conventional battery, it requires a uh, mass flow control or the pressure regulation and other peripheral uh, material or the component to make it happen to generate power properly. Because the fuel cell has maintained certain flow rate 
pressure and temperature. So the, the fuel cell system will be given in the next section.